Hi. Hey. How Welcome are you? to Dorset. Oh, uh, the New York you. Latina Film Festival. Hey, girl. Thank you. Am I sideways? You kind of are. How do I fix this? Hold on. Okay. There okay. you go. I told you, I'm a hundred years old. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay you? it's so lovely to see you it's so lovely you to too. like virtually meet you you know i'm, I'm over yeah. here trying to set this up look look okay okay we're okay. good okay Ready? you look fabulous thank you so much how are yes. you doing are you healthy are you happy everything's good i'm healthy i'm happy i'm so excited to be here i feel blessed you know just to be in conversation you know with yes. an awesome latina you know what i mean it's yes just, it's just awesome i'm yeah. so thrilled to be here i yeah. was thinking about um the question that was just asked about um afro latina shows that are out there yeah i don't know that there's any that are centered but i think you guys just had on dulce you just had julissa calderon and she's in Hentified, which just got a second season. So she exactly. definitely check that out because the work Exactly. The and if anything, right, this conversation is for us to amplify that we need more, that we oh my want gosh. more, that we need more. The fact yes. that we're like having to look for the one show or the one little thing somewhere in the nooks and crannies exactly. is kind of crazy, right? Yeah, and just the, the, the lens that being Latinx really covers. You know, there's so many different stories. There's so many different places. There's so many different shades. There's so many different experiences. And they're all valuable. They're all valid. They all need to be told, you know. Exactly. Different hair types, you know what I mean? Different Oh, looks. my God, yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's all things. good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so excited to be talking with you because you. I got a chance to see the film Long okay. Gone By. Good. And it's playing right now on the HBO Latino and HBO. And honestly, I saw it through the HBO app. So that was yep. pretty easy for me to just be able to see it. And awesome. <sighs> let me tell yeah, you. Yeah, it's crazy. We, we, you know, I didn't even have HBO when it premiered. I was like, wait a minute. I was out here posting about it. And I was like, wait, I need to go get HBO. I don't even watch that movie. So yeah. Um, and this is a good time to see stuff. You know what yes. I mean? As people are at home, yes. you know. Unfortunately, yeah. for all the stuff that's going on, but it's also a good opportunity to catch up on yeah. things that are out happening in the world, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really weird thing. It's like, you know, it's hard because we're not able to get out there and promote it the way we really want to, but it's also, you know, people are at home more, and so there's not as much happening, so more people are talking about it, which is, you know, great, too. Absolutely. And it's so timely. I mean, yeah. the, the, the themes of the film... You know, absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'll share a little bit about it, but I don't want to share too much because I really want people to check it out. Yeah, so I don't want to take it too much, you know. <laughs> but, you know, we have a mom, Ana Alvarez, right? And her mm -hmm. daughter, Izzy. And, you know, she's a single mom. She's from Nicaragua and she's mm -hmm. here in the United States. On top of that, she's not even in, like, New York. She's in Indiana, yeah. right? Yeah. Having to, like, survive what that looks like. Yeah. But two things happen, right? Where the daughter really gets into a really awesome opportunity to go to school, right? To go to university. Yeah. But then the mother, at the other hand, all of a sudden gets these deportation papers, right? And yeah. like, for me to see the, you know, the love and loyalty between the mother and the daughter, but also the risk and sacrifice that was made was just out of yeah, this world. Yeah, it was it was really crazy even just to play it and even just to play it in that place warsaw indiana which is just this sort of small town americana kind of picture book place and then to play that story and the, the girl who plays my my daughter in the film is actually my niece oh um, she had never acted before a day in her life what? her very first yeah her very first movie yeah and i gotta check her out she's fantastic she's incredible i honestly can't believe we auditioned a bunch of young girls, but um, she just came in there and she just had that that sort of that strength, you know, that innocence, that right. Life. That's just who she is. She's like that, actually. Right, like, right. You know, so she, yeah, it was surreal to shoot that and to tell that story. It was really, really awesome. great. And the bond was there. I mean, you know, this mother and the daughter. You know what I mean? Yeah. That the love is there, but it was also like the silences were also what, you know, what really yeah. attracted me, you know, was such a great tool to be able to like, people that love each other also don't tell each other everything, oh right? Like the secrets that we keep to protect yeah. each other. 
That's one of my biggest pet peeves in movies when you see people saying things that like nobody says to their mom every day, like, I love you, mom, you're the best, you know, it's, right. it's a, it's a subtle, it's quiet, it's, and I think one of the things that Andrew was doing, even Andrew's the director and writer of the film, was right. wanting to tell the story in those silences, and not wanting to tell anybody anything, just wanting to have the relationship speak for itself, and these people speak for themselves, and just kind of let the story unfold in a more natural way. Because what happens is sort of crazy. They're yeah. trying to figure out how you go from from where it started to that craziness. It was, right. it was unique and it was it was really great as an actor to get to play that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean I'm curious for you as an actress getting this role, right? Oh and God. having to tackle all these emotional things that you know that she's having to go through. How how did you how did you prepare? You know, well, how, you what know, did you kind of yeah. It's crazy. Like it, I've been in this industry for a really long time. My my very first job I was uh, you know, I went to an open call for rent back in the day. Hello. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way. I mean, I had to be dragged to the audition. And uh, so I was like, there's no way I'm never gonna, never gonna book this. I went and within a week, I was on a plane to New York, just with my I mean, I used to be a rent head. I used to wait in line for the lottery. And within a so week, did I. Oh, my God. Right? I yes, mean, me and Dominic would wait. Oh, my God. My friend Dominic would yeah, wait he told online. Me. And he we would go see it like three or four times. OK, we yes. are right heads, too, baby. Yeah, it's bananas. And back then, you know, back then, it's very much like Broadway now. I mean, this was like quite a few years ago. And they were like, oh, rent solved the problem. Look at all the multicolored people on Broadway. Right. And then like after rent, it was like everybody's you know, white again, and then no Hamilton, Hamilton fixed everything. And now it's right, like right back to what it was. <laughs> mm -hmm. Crickets. Yeah. But you know, I got there. And that that's like my very first job. And from that moment, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you some stories about that, too. I had this oh crazy. Um, I think it was just that imposter syndrome, like, I don't belong here. What am I doing here? Because even though I knew I, I loved what I was doing, and I knew I had I had the passion and then they, they, you know, they, I, I booked this open call out of, you know, thousands of people. Yeah. I felt like I didn't belong. And that imposter syndrome sort of followed me throughout my whole career. Oh so this gosh. movie, you know, I worked a little bit. I've, I've done guest stars and little things. I've never had an opportunity like this where, you know, at this stage in my life, at this stage in my career, someone is telling me they want me to, to hold the entire film. And, the thing with Andrew, who's the writer and director, he had just finished a really successful documentary called The True Cost, which you should check out. It's really good. It's about fast fashion in the industry. And, and he had he had clout. He, he was having conversations with name actors, people that wanted him to make films with them. And instead, for reasons I still don't know, I mean, he, he and I were working on a documentary series together I was producing it story producing it but he just said I want you to be in this film I never auditioned for it he never mm -hmm. even saw my work I mean he saw a reel I had but he just has said that he felt like you know he wanted to if he was going to do this he wanted to use the platform for someone whose work he you know he wanted to amplify and right. so it was a huge opportunity and a lot of um that imposter syndrome started creeping up again. Like you don't, you can't carry this movie. You don't have the ability. Like if you were gonna make it, you would have made it by now. So there was a lot of fear, but then I just kind of told myself, you know, I gotta, I gotta give myself permission. And I think that's what we all have to start telling ourselves. We gotta give ourselves permission to take up space. Absolutely. And, and I think that's the sort of kind of weird place we find ourselves in is like, we find ourselves in this position of like wanting to tell our stories, of knowing that they're valuable, knowing that our audience is powerful and our mm -hmm. audience can amplify and can, can do so much, but being also struggling with the, the, that imposter syndrome that's really real, like, oh, I don't belong here. I don't have the same, I don't have the same experience. And you have to just tell yourself, like, I have a right to be here. My stories are valuable. And I have the ability to carry this because just by virtue of being a human being on this planet, this is a story that deserves to be told. So like once I got, this is a long answer, but once I got yeah. rid of that and gave myself permission to take up space, then all the pieces just fell into place. And um, from the first scene, the first scene in the movie is the first scene we shot. 
and I wanted to do a good job, but I just told myself, you know, I've just got to, I just got to believe that like I belong here. And once I did that, um, and you know, Andrew was very helpful with that. He really, he, I mean, I think they were his words. Like you belong here, you belong where you're at. Then it just became very easy. You know, I was raised by a single mother with four kids who worked four jobs and made piñatas in a living room and like also worked at the airport and also had, you know. Hustler, hustler. Yes, I was raised yes. by a woman who made no excuses. Mm -hmm. Like she did what she had to do. So I knew that story. Um, and my niece is there playing my daughter who, I, I, you know, I, so just like once I just said, you know what, I deserve to be here. It's okay. Then it all kind of fell into place because it's a human story, you know. So yeah, it was a it was a real gift, and it's been a it's been a long road and to get here, but yeah. yeah. But, but I mean, know. everything you're saying, honestly, you know, can travel and translates to all these other spaces, oh, yeah. right? Of yeah. occupying space, of making sure that, and and believing yeah. that you belong there, right? Whether it's school, whether it's at your job, whether oh, it's yes. running, right? Whatever those things that you do in your life to take space and to yes. activate it and know that you belong there. Absolutely. And you know, and I think that we don't realize because we're so used to fighting, fighting for our voices. I mean, I left the industry for five years because I was like, I'm tired. Um, I'm tired of going out for the same four roles. Honestly, I'm tired of it. I don't want to do it anymore. There's no space for me here. I'm out. And then, you know, of course, you're never out, right? It always pulls you back in. Absolutely. But, but the industry is shifting a little bit. But I think that's the thing is that like, the boldness, especially as a woman, especially as a woman of color, the boldness of saying, because we have to shout that we belong here. It's not enough to just say it. We have to say we belong here and our stories are valuable and we have a right to tell them. And we need to get people in positions of power to start greenlighting that. So, you know, things like this festival. like or how about become those people in positions of power? Honey, and start making yes. Those you Hello. Gotta, like break those doors down. <laughs> yes. Girl, if you ever need me to go pull up on somebody, just let me know. <laughs> we got this. You have yes. the support of Uptown, girl. Well, that's, you know, that's the thing. I, you know, this festival, the New York Latino Film Festival, what this festival is doing for our community, I cannot say enough about it because well, first of all, walking into, we were, we were defeated, man. We made this movie with a lot of love and a lot of heart. And we were rejected from basically every festival. And the same story was told over and over and over again. Oh, you don't have a name. We need, we need a way to, because it's all about marketing it, right? Right. And what do they all say? We're trying to give a lens to, to filmmakers, right? But what the New York Filipino Film Festival did, what Miguel did, the programmer, is he right. watched our film. He had a conversation with me about the film. And it wasn't about who was in it. What It was about the story. And it was about the, the quality of the film. And even the permission to not be perfect, but to know, hey, there's something here. And I want to amplify these people and give them another opportunity, right? So Absolutely. that festival opened so many doors for us. This festival opened so right. many doors for us. Because yeah. the New York Latino Film Festival is doing what it says it's doing which is giving a voice to people that need a platform that do not yes. have a platform so you can have i'm not naming any names but you can have all the collabs you want you can have all the workshops you want you can have all the oh this is the latino arm of this but when you look at it, the new york latino film festival you have real-time people that are really elevating quality work right absolutely and that's that's what it's all about and when you go to the festival um you look around and everybody looks like you. It's great. You're not the only brown person in the room. It's like, it's oh my great. God, we're all, you know, like the white people are kind of like, oh, you know, and I'm like, yeah. okay, come on. It's a like, okay. family. You're fine. <laughs> exactly. It's so true. It feels very much like a reunion also of like, yes. you know, of school of like the people that are in this with you in the battle with you of like, yes. yeah, you know what I mean? And whether you're a writer, whether you're a writer or a screenwriter or or you're a lighting person, right? Or yeah. makeup. Like, it doesn't yes. matter as long as you're in it together, in this industry yes. together. Yeah. And there's an openness, too, of, of community. I mean, I've kept in contact with a couple people from the festival that that whose work I believe in that I just saw for five seconds and I was just like, these are incredible people. These, this is an incredible talent. And 
every, there's a real openness and a real collaboration there. And, uh, you know, I can't, I can't say enough about it. Were it not for the festival, the right. door to HBO wouldn't have even been open to us because that's where we started having those conversations. So, you know, we, we owe everything to this festival and I owe everything to this festival. And, and um, once again, New York is just like making all my dreams come true per usual. This little California girl is like, just starstruck over New York again. <laughs> well, New York loves you. And at the end of no. the day, you know, what I, we want to do here is also to amplify it, you know, yeah. folks to know that it is on HBO right now and they can check it out at any time, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah, a lot of times these films or these projects, you don't have access to it, you know, yeah. so yeah. let's try I mean, to see. The, the, the audience is crazy. The audience that we have now because of the movie or because of the festival and because of HBO is crazy. There's another film that premiered at, at the festival with us, Coyote Lake. That's also on HBO right now, too. Awesome. And um, Glenise Hunter, she she did a web series that premiered at the New York Latino Film Festival. Her her series, Woke, is on Amazon Prime. It's like the first episode. It's so good. She's so good. So good. <laughs> awesome. She's going to be a that girl. <laughs> people need, that's what it is. It's like people don't really have a, a, a way to find out about all these things. Yeah. There's so many networks. There's so many platforms. And I feel that that's also what's happening, yeah. you know, and people really want those specific stories and yes. these specific things. So yeah. that's something to think about, even for us, you know. Yeah, that's, a, that's a really good point. I've thought about that a lot, too, you know, like, if you want to, if I, like, I had a short I had written, and I'm not a director, but I was like, I'd really love, you know, to find a female woman of color to direct this film and I was just thinking like where do I begin like where's the um yes HBO Max yes now on HBO Max too <laughs> um <laughs> I'm reading the comments but, yeah, you know, that I thought about that the other day is like we need like a database of you know not everybody knows the big names and the people that are working we need like a database of people that are like creating good quality work but haven't had that big breakout moment absolutely yeah. you know absolutely that's what so we need that's it. I'm putting that on my to-do list. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's fabulous. And you know, long gone by. I hope everybody goes checks it out. You yeah. know, but I'm also curious as your journey coming in, you know, the yeah. fact that you said that you went into an open call and you didn't yeah. believe and then you got this role. Me me, right? Like Yeah, well, I was a swing. And what a swing okay. is, a sw do you know what a swing does? Tell a me, tell a us. A swing Educate is like an us, understudy that learns five different tracks of the role. So I was a Mimi cover, a Maureen cover, and then I did three different tracks of like, uh, of the ensemble. Lord. So the covers are usually, I don't know what it's like now, but, but then it was that the covers would be sort of tiered. So you'd have a first cover. You saw me as Mark's mom. Look at that. Did I and people right? need to understand what it is to cover these roles and to cover, because it's covering lines, choreography. Yeah, it I was, mean, and, it and was all these roles. I mean, I came, I came from community theater, right? Where I was like, me too. I mean, I was like the queen bee in my community theater. You would have thought I was Madonna, just like everybody, you know. And then I go yeah. to New York, and I'm like, Ooh, like I had never done anything. I was coming in there with like a little hat on, looking like Blossom, just walking through, <laughs> trying to like. <laughs> I had no business being there, I think. But but I think what really, you know, my friend was like, you auditioned, they booked you. That's why you make, but at the time, like I said before, I was just so, so terrified. So yeah, so I was a cover and um, I, my first performance as Mimi, which was when it, it goes down in like Broadway history. Oh my God. So Norbert Leo Bucks was playing um, Roger at the okay. time. And actually I was in the company with Leslie Odom Jr. He was, he was in our company. He was so young, like 17 or something. And um Oh, we were doing out, no, not out tonight. The, the scene where I kiss him very, very early on. I go to kiss him and I knock his tooth as a cap. I knocked his tooth out. Had to go to the dentist. They had to put an understudy on that night. Okay, so that's already at rehearsal. That happened at rehearsal. Then that night, during light my candle, I'm like, mm, would you light my candle? I set my damn hair on fire. Girl on stage, set my hair on fire. No. Yes, yes. No I way. On fire. Yes. What? I had to like pat that shit down. What? <laughs> pat hair down. Then Hair I'm on fire, yes. live on Broadway. My, my sweet little self just trying so hard. I went, I, I mean, I wish somebody had video of it. Then I went and did Out Tonight. And literally, they used to have where you'd put glitter in your hair. 
and you'd like you know when she would shake her hair out at the top of the scaffolding all the glitter would come oh, yes. down you that's like, my favorite scene where she's the at the scaffolding glitter. yeah what? it was like the moment the glitter yes. falls in my eye and i trip and end up like i'm not i'm not down playing. the stairs no on okay. the scaffolding when i'm on okay. top of it flip upside down I'm literally upside down. I kept singing, though. I will say that. <laughs> upside down. Yeah, had to crawl my ass back up. Talking about, oh, tonight. Just crawling, going. Down. It was so oh boring. I mean, I could not. The stage manager was, like, running down. I could see him. Like, he thought I was going to die. They literally thought I was going to die. Oh, my and, God. But I did not die. I survived. And, you know, I think it really came down to, like, Listen, Beyonce will be very proud. Well, thank you. <laughs> Nobody would have been proud. I survived, and you know what? It was, it was just the most just tragic, awful. And I, but you know what? I picked myself up. I got back up. I did it. I did it again and again and again. And then, and then I, you know, when I learned from like twenty years later, like I learned from it. When I think about it, I'm like. That's it. It's the imposter syndrome. If yep. you do not believe you belong somewhere, you will self sabotage and you will break. You will break down those opportunities. And I Absolutely. really, I wasn't ready. I think. But I mean, and I look at look at how these obstacles kind of presented themselves exactly. in front of you, so that you could see oh, yeah. that you could overcome them and you can kind of like handle them, no matter yeah. what, whether it was a fire. Or oh. whatever that in those moments that you could make it happen if and you like that's ask, amazing if you hold that cast and ask them if i was ever gonna have any success in this industry they would have been like oh she's sweet but no but look at you now <laughs> but you know i think i really do think um you know, i'm a grown-ass woman now i'm an adult so i and i i'm not insecure i'm not afraid of who i am i'm not afraid and i learned a lot from young people to young people coming up in this industry are just they're they're the ones who are teaching me to like take space because they're not apologetic about who they are they're not mm. apologetic about about you know what they're asking us to consider and they're changing the industry they're saying nothing by us without us like that's not something my generation was saying they're they're changing the way that this industry looks so it helps me i think to give myself permission to be a woman to be a mother to to take up space. I mean, that's the theme, right? Just to Absolutely. take up space. And, and you know, I'm nothing without my failures, period. I mean, that's the truth. If I, I didn't that. have those failures, if I didn't have those moments that really just carved out who I am, like, none of these opportunities would be, would be present, you know? I, yeah. I mean, those life experiences are what also set you up, you know what I mean? So yeah, that you absolutely. can overcome anything. I mean... And I thought you were amazing before, and now I'm just like, you're oh. freaking awesome. What? I am, I am writing. I'm writing out of necessity. I'm not a writer, but I'm writing out of necessity. I'm writing a pilot about that experience on Broadway. So oh, hopefully that's fabulous. Please continue it. to write. I yeah. love writing. I've been we writing. And, Are and you we writing really too? Do. Yeah, yeah, oh, I've okay, been writing. Okay. I'm writing a pilot. I'm so excited. Oh, you are? That's awesome. That's yeah. good. Good. Keep going. That's yes. what we need is more of us writing. Exactly. And this is Afro Latino story based in Washington Heights. So, you know. Awesome. I'm here. You know what I mean? The thing yeah, is that about asking, having where, access. Does anyone know of a new series? You're like, <laughs> me? Kind of. You know, the thing is that people, you know, don't have access and opportunity. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's where the New York Latino Film Festival is at. Yeah. You know what I mean? To open these doors and things. Yes. You know, it's important. Even if you're not, even if you're not screening there, buy a ticket, buy a pass, go to those festivals, go to that festival because um, nobody is shy and nobody is like bougie really. Everyone will talk to you. So walk in, get that pass, go network, go to the, go to the sit down and watch the, the panels. They were so incredible. You That's know, true. even if your film is not in the festival. And once you're, once you've experienced the festival, you really have a family of supportive people that are there to, to always look at your work and to always want to, you know, lift you up and elevate you. It's Absolutely. such a great, great fest. I can't say enough that's, about it. I know I'm like, going no, but that's such a great point of what you're saying that it is about relationships. Cause it's not yeah. about the no. one time that you went to the festival. Guess what? You will know these people for the rest of yeah. your life. If you stay in contact. Right. And it's about yeah. being 
building a network of people that you know that could support and amplify like yeah. you said the relationships are really what i'm finding is the big sort of thing you know and like you know the genuine relationships not trying to force anything and not trying to ask people for favors but really just saying you know i appreciate right. your work i appreciate what what i saw of you and if i if i ever have a position to help you i'm i want to do it and continuing to you know, we have so much power than with like social media and like that wasn't available to me when I was coming up, but we have so much power to spread our work. You can literally make a movie on your phone. I mean, you, there are no excuses anymore to not be telling right. our own stories, you know, none. Absolutely. And you still see it when you're watching stuff on TV, you still see, like, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to name the show, but I'm 99% sure I saw a white girl slap on an accent play a Mexican girl the other day on a very prominent show. So you still <laughs> see these things happening. Oh, yeah. But we got to We got to just tell our own stories. That's just all there is to it. That's it. You Absolutely. Know? Be the writers, be the actors, you know, yes. producing it, making it be happen. Showrunners. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. You got it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm curious if people have questions. Feel free to put them in the in the yeah. question mark thing. Somebody but asked and something be, earlier, but I don't know how to work this. So I'm, I'm gonna let you handle it. And like, I will make sure and I will check. But one thing that I actually wanted to ask you about that I saw in your in your writing, your information is that you're a long distance runner. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. I <laughs> love running, so we need to Are talk about runners? this. Yeah. I, okay. So I started running out of like necessity. Um, when I, I told you I took a break from the, I took about a four or five year break. Yeah. I had two kids. Um, not everybody takes a break when they have kids, which is great. I, I was burnt out from the industry and I was, I wanted to go back to college and had a couple kids. And when I was gone, I just couldn't afford a gym membership and I wanted to work out. And so I was like, All right, I'll go run. I'll run a little bit. And I found myself really loving, um, like the meditation part of it, just the sort of repetitiveness of it. And yeah. being an actor for close to, at that time, close to like 15 years, where like you feel like you have, where you feel like you have the ability, but you don't have the opportunity. It can be discouraging. What I loved about running was like, I can say I'm going to run X miles. And then all I got to do is put one foot in front of the other and I'll accomplish that goal. So right. like, it became for me like a real, is very cheesy but it became like a spiritual thing because I was like okay I can run one mile and then it was like I can run five miles and then out of nowhere I was like I want to run a marathon I think I want to run a marathon mm -hmm. I was like okay and then out of I mean it was the most I ran my first I've only run like three full marathons I do a lot of half marathons and I do a lot of running at home but the cool. first time I ran a marathon I just I finished that cro that line and I like i fully started crying i was like Ugh. <laughs> just like this really emotional moment uh what do you think the film industry will be like in the next few months for actors and directors and writers um hang on i'm gonna answer that but yes yeah. i do love to i do love to run and now i just just continue to do it i love the ability the the sort of like all like the only thing that gets in your way of accomplishing your goal in running is yourself. And I think that's true for life, really. You know? Absolutely. The only thing that gets in your way, really, um, not all the time, but in most cases is your, your ability to kind of like stick with it. And I'm living proof. I mean, people have told me every time I come back to this industry, people tell me it's a pipe dream and it'll never happen. And, you know, you should really focus on something else. And here I am, however many years later, and I got a movie on HBO. So, you know, don't listen. Crush it. You know, Hello. <laughs> yes. uh, what do I think the industry will look like? Somebody yeah. asked that question. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm hearing from people like I heard that Tyler Perry Studios is starting up filming again. I think that um, they're they are do this is what they're doing is I think that they're um, they're isolating like they're they're keeping people. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not isolating, but um, quarantined together right. while they're shooting. So right. if the shoot takes a month, they all have to kind of live there for a month. They're doing like testing every day and they're, you know, they're doing their best to contain it. I think that's what they're doing. Um, there's been some other shoots happening in other parts of the world. I mean, I think people are anxious to get back to work, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like a weird industry because it's the only industry where you right. can't really, um, 
can't really social distance if you have like a love scene, you know what I mean? <laughs> for sure. I know a lot of rewrites are happening. I'm Do you sure. know what I mean? <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I got another question here from Dominic. Sure. If you could tell young Erica a message, what mm. would you tell her? What's some advice for young Erica? Oh. Girl, you will never be this skinny or this pretty again. Stop being so insecure. That's the first thing I would tell her. I love I would that. Tell her, I would tell her, you are the skinniest and prettiest you will ever be. So stop it. Um, but honestly, I think um, that's so hard because I think the lessons you learn, you learn with experience and you learn from the from the hard things you go through. But I think the biggest one is like kind of what we've been talking about this whole time is, you know, you deserve to be here and you deserve these opportunities and you deserve to be successful and it's okay to allow it into your life. Cause I think that has been the biggest barrier is the little voice inside me that says like, you don't really deserve this or you don't really, that we all kind of have like, yeah, yeah, we, we talk a big game, but there's a little voice that's like, oh, but really you have to, you have to say that you deserve it. You have to believe that you deserve it and you have to allow it to come into your life, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we got another one right there. What's your advice for Latino filmmakers to get a short film produced? Which I think goes to the, right. you know, general question of what are some advice that you have for young Latino creatives to get in, to get produced, to get their stuff seen? Yeah. I mean, relationships is the first thing. Um, build those relationships everywhere you can. Because the, the secret to like getting a short film made and having it look great is kind of to pull in favors. Because it costs money to rent a camera, you know, it costs money to do a lot of stuff. But I think building those relationships is really, really where it is. You know, it starts with the writing of it. Um, and then like really do that. This is another place where maybe that list would be a good, a good thing to have. You know, there's a lot of uh, grants for filmmakers of color. There's a lot of spaces that are giving money. So if you have something short that you've written, you know, I think you've got to pull in a producer, you got to pull in somebody that can help you with casting, all that stuff. But building those relationships is the is the best place to start, I think, because yeah, you can't do it alone. You can't do anything alone. Absolutely. And then to, to and this is something I'm putting into practice right now, because um, it's easy when you're a mom and you've got work and you've got a husband and you've got kids and you've got this and you've got that or when you're not a mom when you're a human being and you've got work and you've got your day job and you've got your dream job and it's easy to just get through the whole day and not have done any real action towards your goal so i would say every single day if you have a goal to produce a short film the first thing you got to do is get eyeballs on that script and don't be sensitive Listen, if you hear the same thing five times, you might want to look at it. You know, that's one thing. Um, and then every single day, do something towards what you want. Every, even if it's 10 minutes, even if it's 15 minutes, put 100 Every day, you got to move towards your goal, towards what you want. And I think those doors will begin to open up. That's you it. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. We even have another question where it comes to, how do you get your glow? Which I, I'm curious too. You mean this glow? It's, that I, it's a, yes, it's the, a the light that I purchased from Amazon and me. <laughs> I think it's that inner glow. It's whatever is the, you know, it's you. So, I mean, uh, are you, how, what do you eat? I know you run. Uh, I'm, I'm like, mostly plant-based, actually. Mostly, I don't say vegan because sometimes I'll have like a cupcake. Um. <laughs> And I'm not trying to make my kids not have cupcakes when they go to birthday parties, but I'm mostly vegan. Um, so I eat a lot of vegetables, uh, a lot of vegetables. <laughs> and, and I think that's it. I don't know. I Yeah, I, I do have a ring light like right here glowing on me. Like when the ring light is not on, I don't glow quite as much. I'll say. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's the highlighter. It's you. It's yes. everything. Thank you. Thank you, you know, I mean, <laughs> you're just a great inspiration for Thank all of us here, you know, watching at home, wherever we are, you know, to, to take you. action into our lives and to make things happen, you know? That's really And if you're ever in New York City, 
you definitely got to come run with me. Um, yes. I'm actually a part of a running group, and we run. Are you really? We usually run every Monday nights in Washington Heights. Oh we my crew god! Oh, how Circa ninety five athletics. Run right now. Well, we've been running, but we've been like socially distant. So we run. Uh, you know, we're on our own. Yeah. But I'm kind of hoping that we could come back yeah. together. But on a Monday night in Washington Heights, it's lit, okay? Oh, like, it's so amazing. lit. And I want you to come experience that. I, I would love to do that. I'm hoping to be back. I'm hoping when the festival comes back up, we'll submit something else or I'll just go as a guest. I really want to go back. Awesome. You're always welcome to come. You're a Thank friend you. of the you know, festival. What? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're just amazing. And anything, you know, that you're working on that you want us to amplify, you know, let us know. Yeah, I definitely will. I mean, right now things are really quiet and we're just pushing the film on HBO. So watch it if you can. Um, and just keep, you know, highlighting those, those shows, Baker and the Beauty, Vida's last season already. But you know, hint if I got a second season. There's a lot of really great work out there. Your new show, which I'm sure is going to be bought any second. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let's talk it into existence. That's right. Yes. Yes. For sure. Absolutely. I mean, is there anything else that you're working on that's coming down the pike that you want to? I was working on a film with Renee Victor. She played my mom in it. I don't know if you know who Renee Victor is. She was the grandma's voice in Coco. She works constantly. You'd know her if you saw her. She's amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, and yeah, uh, but right now, nothing. Right now, I'm just writing, 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 and just trying to promote the film. Um, and I'm hoping that, you know, things will open. You never know in this industry, get, take it all up a little bit. There you are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry. Really. No, no, yeah. you're fine. You're fine. So hoping that things will open up here, but right now, just writing. <laughs> Yeah. Well, how can our the folks watching? How can we support you? What would you HBO, like? HBO all platforms. It's streaming on all platforms, um, and you can watch it on demand. You can watch it. You can follow me on social media, and I'll post about it pretty much daily. That's all I do is talk about the movie. Um, you can watch it on that, um, and I think it's going to be on. I think it'll be for purchase. I think on Amazon maybe, but um, on HBO on all platforms. And HBO Max is launching, so you can find it there, too. Awesome. That sounds yeah. great. Everyone's going to definitely tune in. And, so. you know, I was breaking up because my mom keeps calling me. And that's what Latina moms do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're doing my something. Mom is watching right now. Yeah, cosa, exactly. pero a la mami llamando. So I love my mom, <laughs> but, you know, mom, I'm live. <laughs> my mom does that to me all the time. Well, I was just laughing. She's on here right now, so she can, she can testify. Unless she's not on here. I don't know. She might be. But she'll call me. And then I won't pick up, and then she will call me again, and then I won't pick up, and then she'll call me again. <laughs> That's my what husband they do. Like, my husband's like, why does she keep calling you? I'm like, why? That's she knows that eventually I'll be like, what? There she is right there. I am watching. Look at her. <laughs> be like, hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> we love moms. Latina moms yes. are the best. Yes, they are. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm nothing without that one. I'll tell you that there you go. Time. See, I'm sure we could, we could we could actually go to her and get some stories, you know? See, because she's like, yes, okay, bye bye. Good to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> we got busted by our mommies. <laughs> oh my goodness! Well, this was such a pleasure. Thank yes, you so much for, for chatting too. with me. Thank you so much for coming on. It's really nice to meet you and good to chat with you. And um, yeah, I wish you nothing but success and health in the future and pura vida. Pura vida. That's it. <laughs> We're Costa Rican, so she's pura vida in Colorado. Are you kidding me? I mm. love Costa Rica. Oh, uh, it's so beautiful. It's know, the best place that. on earth. And shout out to Costa Rica for, for like, you know, like LGBT and being like oh, progressive yeah, and being it. first. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And we're a green country. Costa Rica. Costa Rica does everything. Everybody needs to go there and live there. It's the best. Actually, you know what? Never mind. Don't. Leave it for me. I know. Don't tell nobody. No. You it's like everything to me. I went everything. when I was younger and I got a chance to be in the rainforest. And I mean, it literally changed my life. Like yeah. I didn't come back the same. I yeah. literally came back. My dad different. lives there right now. He lives there. We go back, we go back as much as we can, but it's been, it's actually been a few years since my, I took my son, my son's eight. I took him when he was like two years old. So we got to go back. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so beautiful. So that that even adds to why you're so cool and you're so so. You know what I mean? It's pura vida with you. It's like yeah, that might be go bomb. Yeah, I'm like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to talk to you and such a pleasure to meet you. 
It was a joy. It was an honor. And I'm truly blessed. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you. Well, Lord. everybody, make sure you follow Erika. Bye. And make sure you follow the New York Latino Film Festival. Yes. And if you want to tune in to more episodes of Dulce, just go to YouTube. And we got more episodes there. So thanks for joining, awesome. everybody. Bye, and I'm guys. Patty Dukes. And make sure you follow me. I already do. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye, guys.